What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Radical Red and today's challenge will be quote unquote the hardest monotype. So last two weeks ago I did a Pokemon Radical Red challenge using only bug type Pokemon and in the comments people were asking me to do the rock type monotype on Radical Red because it's the hardest monotype according to the comments uh, because most of the Pokemon are very weak to very generic typing, water, ground, all that. So people consider it harder than bug types. And since bug types have a lot of setup and a lot of tanky Pokemon at the very least, I guess it could be considered that rock types are more limited than bug type Pokemon. So we're gonna try it out on Radical Red ourselves and determine whether it's harder or easier using rock type Pokemon. Now before we get into the challenge, I wanna lay down some ground rules. We are strictly doing only rock type Pokemon. They must be rock types. They can have a secondary type, of, but they must be rock types, obviously. We're playing on Radical Red, so there's no items inside of battle. There's no quick switching, so you have to manually switch your Pokemon out. There is a soft level cap, which we abuse a little bit, but you know what? There is a soft level cap. And entirely, our goal is just to beat the game on regular difficulty. Of course, the final and most important role in each of my challenge video, each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thank you so much for leaving a comment in the previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a Pokemon in my future challenge videos, just drop in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like on this video, it'll greatly help my channel. And subscribe if you guys are not already. I'm also starting a Pokemon Unbound Let's Play tomorrow. So check back on my channel around the same time tomorrow and you will see a brand new type of videos. We're doing some daily Unbound videos, so get excited for that. It is a challenge video. We're playing on insane mode, but anyways, let's get to this challenge video. Let's start off with getting our starter Pokemon. Where our starter Pokemon is not going to be Bulbasaur. I think, is there a rock type starter Pokemon? I don't think so. I can't think of one off the top of my head. It is 2.20 a.m. right now on the same day I'm posting. So a little bit of procrastination on my part during the commentary. But our first Pokemon we're going to get is going to be a Lycanroc. Rock. Well, a Rock Ruff. This first Rock Ruff is not too special. It's just a starter Pokemon. It's a placeholder because we need to capture him to unlock his hidden ability, which is going to be Steadfast, which will also translate into giving us a Lycanroc. Rock with a tough claws as an ability so that's gonna be very nice we're gonna catch ourselves a steadfast rock rough put that on the team uh shout out to wiggle one of the goats in pokemon challenge youtubers uh talked to him a few times it's pretty chill anyways let's head into diggler's cave uh there are some new pokemon for us to catch mainly rock type pokemon's geodude alolan geodude <laughs> there's a nose pass and also a rock and roller that should round up our team for five members a lot of pokemon in a diggler's cave and now we can head up into the Pokemon Museum to face off against Faulkner. Since we have a bunch of Rock-type Pokemon on our team, we can just use Rollout and beat him down fairly easily. And that is the first mini-boss done, swept easily. Now we face off against the first gym leader in the game. We're kind of... we we try a few times. We have to retry to find out the strategy. Uh, the strategy is to start off with our regular Geodude, our Kantoin, uh, just to Rock Polish up twice Force the Geodude to self-destruct for some reason. I'm not sure why it's programmed like this, but it self-destructs and then allows me to magnitude into the Vulpix to knock him out. And then I'm able to try to get a lucky roll on magnitude against the Onyx. We get a decent one where he goes down to red HP. I do some more damage with my Rock Ruff and then finish him off using my Nose Pass. Now my Nose Pass will finish off the Onyx. The Arcan will come out next. I'm able to just beat it down using his Nose Pass. Now this Nose Pass... I'm not too big of a fan of it. I don't think it's going to do too much for me. I mean, it's Thunder Wave, which is nice and all. I eventually will replace him, but just not currently. I'm just not a big fan of using Nose Pass. I don't know. He's never really generated any great things for me. So uh, we're also going to go into Mount Moon and capture our next Pokemon, which is actually big hitter. We're going to go out and catch ourselves a Chudo. A Chudo? Chutile? Uh, it's a turtle rock thing it's not even a rock type now it's a pure water type it'll evolve into a dreadnought which will be a water and rock type pokemon which is pretty fun we actually have one at the end of mount moon as you can see we're clearing through the first archer fight here not a problem at all for our dreadnought dreadnought is actually pretty strong he has strong jaws if you have the right ability he also just has a insanely strong physical attacks he's kind of slow though so you can use swift swim as an ability or you can just use aqua jet like i'm doing to negate his low speed now from there we're gonna move on and face off against misty a bit over level but we use the daycare strategy to just get a little higher levels just so since we're rock types against a water team i think it's only fair so we're gonna start off the battle off against misty using our dreadnought uh, this is a horrible plan. So we're going to restart. Not put Dreadnought at the beginning. 
us restart completely using our nose pass, thunder wave into the frogadier, and then allow my nose pass to go down because it's useless. I uh, almost actually knock him out, but I switch out into my Lycan Rock, which has Tough Claws and Thrash. Thrash for one shot to Frogadier and one shot knock out to Floatzel, which is crazy. I luckily only have a two turn move, so I'm confused now. I could switch out to a different Pokemon to just absorb a hit from the Lantern. Uh, no, I don't. Actually, I lied. I completely lied. Big capping. I just stayed in and <laughs> forced my way out of confusion and then knock out the Lantern. He's just brute forcing through everyone. He almost one shots to star me. If I put a muscle band on him, it might have been over for everyone. But I switch out to my sturdy Alolan Graveler and then I just self destruct to knock out Misty and that is the second gym badge. Okay, pretty simple. Next up, we're going to move on into Vermilion City. Uh, again, Thrashing Lycanroc is completely broken. If you ever have a chance to use this, uh, just use it. It's Thrash and Tough Claws is actually a broken strategy. We end up beating Brendan and getting some Lucky Eggs. And from there, this will unlock Rock Tunnel, which will allow us to get the next few Pokemon. I think almost every Pokemon we get here. Uh, besides the Fossil Pokemon, I think this is the rest of the game. So we're going to catch ourselves a Carcroll, which is going to be a, a Minecart with Coals in it. That's a Pokemon. But it's a Fire and Rock type, which will be useful for the 4th Gym. And also we're going to go out and catch ourselves a Rhyhorn, which will evolve into Rhyperior eventually. And also, not to mention, a uh, Dwebble. Dwebble is a Rock and Bug type that we used in the previous challenge that also has Shell Smash. It's pretty good, so we're going to keep that on our team. As we move forwards against the third gym leader in the game, we're going to face off against Lieutenant Surge. Surge is going to be the electric type gym leader in the game, and we're going to start the battle off against him using our Lycan Rock. Now, Lycan Rock, of course, is going to Thrash. Maybe I should have went for a Rock Slide Flinch, but two Thrashes get me into confusion, but knock out the Pinchurchin without doing anything to me. Uh, I decided to go out and sack one of my next Pokemon because obviously the Manectric comes out next. I don't think I have a really big plan for him. I should have kept this. I don't know why I didn't keep my Alolan Graveler here. I guess I'm wanting to speed boost lower. I guess that's my game plan. So I can switch out to my Lycan Rock to thrash him to knock him out. So it actually worked out. And then I actually outspeed the Alolan Raichu to thrash him and knock him out as well. And then the Vigavolt almost gets one shot. I feel like I do have a muscle band on at this point. So almost one shot at Vigavolt, which is crazy. I switch out into my Crustle. And at this point, I can't choke this battle. I outspeed him. Rock Slide will knock out the Vigavolt. And then all I need to do is lower the speed of the Bolton. If you ever seen me play hardcore mode, Bo Bolos is my favorite move of all time. It just lowers the speed, allows me to get some momentum going, and we beat down anything. So I think I fall in love with Bolos as a move, but it's actually very weak. It only has like 60 power. So I, I mean, I need, to, I need to get back into reality. Earthquake is such a better move. I just love Bolos because of hardcore mode on Radical Red. But from there though, we're going to move on through Rock Tunnel and clear through Rock Tunnel. It's not a problem at all for Lycan Rock. Again, Thrash Lycan Rock, very broken. Now let's move on into Celadon City. I completely forgot I could revive Ammonite since I have the Helix Fossil here. But uh, we're going to go out and get ourselves an Arcan and then come back later for an Ammonite. And then from there, we're going to move on into the next gym in the game. We're going to face off against Erica. Erica is going to be the Grass type gym leader. We start the battle off against her using our crust off for some reason. Shell smash up first turn. Okay, okay. Xers are one shots to Pseudo Riddle. Should have gone for a second shell smash. Maybe Sucker Punch would have killed me. I'm not too sure. Uh, Meganian comes out next. I went for the flinch. Did not work, unfortunately. But um, I also try to run away from the battle. But I'm here to go out into my. What is it? Colossal? Colossal? This giant mountain of coal Pokemon. I tar shot it and then fire punch him to knock him out, which is. I don't know if that changes anything, but it did one-shot him, so I will take it. Anyways, from there, he's going to go out into his Rillaboom. His Rillaboom is almost going to knock on my Archeops, but luckily, Dual Wing Beam will knock him out. And then, uh, obviously, going to save my regular Golem because he's going to explode on the Superior. Sack my Crusto against him. Go out to my Pro Pass to Thunder Wave him? Okay. I thought it was going to explode on the Superior. Oh, no, it does have a Focus Sash, so it does more. It makes more sense. That I Thunder Wave and do Wing Beat, knock out the Superior, and then do a lot of chip against the Venusaur. And finally, my Lycan Rock can thrash into the Venusaur to knock him out, get a free win, and get our fourth gym badge. So, that's pretty simple right there. Next up, we're going to beat down Giovanni. Giovanni's not a problem at all. And we can move on into Lavender Tower, which in here, we get <laughs> a lucky again that our last Pokemon can beat down the Alolan Marowak. Now, next up, we're going to face off against our rival in Sofco. We're actually speeding through this challenge video. Uh, unfortunately, he's speeding through my team as he's beating down everyone. Luckily, my Crusto can actually end up knocking out 
the Electivire, surviving two Plasma Fists. And then Arceus will save the day and beat down Jumpluff and the Charizard. So we beat down our rival, uh, just again, very luckily. And from there, we're going to face off against Arya and Archer uh, in this double battle fight. It does take a little bit for me to beat this. I cannot cap to you guys. It took me such a long time to beat these two. But eventually, I will be able to knock out <laughs> Archer and Ariana. We got a very lucky crit at the end, and we end up beating the Incineroar. I'm not too sure why I didn't use Liquidation, but don't worry about that. Jawlock will knock him out, and we can move on face off against Giovanni, which is a easier battle. It's just explode on the Pulti guys and beat him down. And then we can move on into the fifth gym batch of the game, face off against Sabrina in this double battle fight in her gym in Saffron City. First try this. We first tried this gym and uh, all we did was just rock slide into a stone edge, knock out a Hatterene, flinched in DD on accident, which wasn't part of the plan, but we take it. Rock slide and stone edge again to get a double KO on the DD and Crawdon. Her next two Pokemon will be a Conqueror and Porygon 2. Let the Porygon 2 survive as we're just getting double team down the Conqueror. And then her last Pokemon will be a Gardevoir. It's actually, we're actually faster than it for some reason. It's going to one-shot both my Lycanroc and Archeops, which is unfortunate. But I go out into my Rapier and my, <laughs> this is a dumb turn. I Earthquaked and knocked out my own <laughs> Golem. So my last two Bowman will be a Dreadnought and <laughs> my Crustle. Luckily, we end up still winning the fight because, you know, with Trick Room still up. She set up Trick Room and her Gardevoir is insanely fast. So we end up beating Sabrina, but <laughs> I just knocked out my Golem for no reason. Uh, I have a Lolan Golem instead of a regular Golem because I feel like it fits the spot better as a utility Pokemon than Pro Pass and also regular Golem. But I was awfully wrong about that. So we're going to switch it up at the end of the game. It's just here on my team for now. As we're going to fish up some new heart skills, go back into the Egg Move Relearner and learn absolutely no moves at all. This is why I didn't spend too much time getting heart skills because absolutely worthless. I didn't get a single new move. But... We're going to face out against Brendan at this entrance of uh, the Safari Zone to get the Surf HM. Uh, unfortunately, though, his Mega Sceptile is very scary. We got very lucky that he just set up in front of me and didn't try to attack me. We are able to exit her and knock him out, so we got very lucky with that. Now we can move on to the next Gym Leader. We're going to face off against the sixth Gym Leader in the game. We're going to face off against Koga. Start the battle off against Koga using my Rhyperior to Stone Edge into the Swallow. Missed the first one, but it's okay. Stone Edge will knock him out. He's gonna go into his Greninja next. I go out to my Dreadnought to take a Surf from him, and Jaw Lock will one shot the Greninja, which is nice. We're gonna let my poor Dreadnought go down. Dreadnought's actually putting in a lot of work. Dreadnought was knock out the Greninja, but Drapion will also go down to my exploding galvanized Alolan Golem, which is insane. Uh, from there, I want to sack my Rhyperior for no reason. Like, I don't understand that one. And then I'm just going to do a wing beat, knock out the Selgor, even though I'm in defeatus, and then sack my Archeops to the Dragon Pope. So I'm going to go out into my Crustle to Shell Smash in front of him. For some reason, he U-turns, allows me to get a Shell Smash up, and then Bodos, knock out the Chalks Tree, and then also Bodos into the Dragon Pope. Once again, I'll speed him, knock him out. So he just threw by letting me Shell Smash by U-turning for, I don't know, AI be messing up. Next up, we're going to face off against Price over here. Price is not an issue at all. We're going to beat down Price fairly easily. Our Lycanroc has the Cell Rock now, so we have the signature move, we just don't have Z moves. I wish it allowed me to use Z moves, but obviously I think it's trying to be a difficult ROM hack, so it's not going to let me do that. So we're going to beat Price, get the Choice Scarf on our first attempt against him, and then face off against Jasmine in Cinnabar Island, which actually took me a few tries. As you can see, we barely survive against Jasmine using our Crusto and Shell Smash once again. Exorcer will clutch things up against her, and luckily enough, we do beat down Jasmine. Luckily, this Magnezone does not have Sturdy. And we beat Jasmine, get the Choice Band, which is very needed. And also, we're going to face off against Chuck to get the Focus Sash from him. Very useful. Um, ironically, I put that on my Golem, which really, in hindsight, means I should just use regular Golem, because... Because regular Golem has Sturdy as an ability anyway, so waste of a party slot, I'm not going to lie. So from there, we're going to face off against the 7th Gym Leader in the game. We're going to face off against Blaine. Blaine is going to be the Fire-type Gym Leader. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Choice Bandit Rhyperior to one-shot him using Earthquake and then sack him to the Venusaur. And then from there, I go out into my Archeops to one-shot him. I don't go into the Fetus because the Fetus in this ROM hack is one-third HP. I'm above half, so... Or below half, I should be fine. And next up, he goes out into his Typhlosion. I go out to my Dreadnought to Aqua Jet him to break out of his Soul Blazing thing. I don't Aqua Jet him. That's interesting. That's a bad play by me. 
So, should have Aqua Jetted, but I'm able to still break it. Do a lot of chip damage to the Sunflora. And then here, I'm just having a Midlight Crisis. Luckily, I guess right to my Archaeops, but it still go down. And then, for some reason, I didn't Accel Rock into the <laughs> Sunflora. I used Crunch, even though I'm a Rock type. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm able to still do a lot of chip damage to the Cinderades. And then, Aqua Jet into the Cinderades to knock them out. Aqua Jet into the Typhlosion to knock them out. And then, the Charizard would knock me out using... Ozzy Solar Beam, but I could go out into my Alolan Golem and one shot him using my Focus Sash. Yay, it worked out. Focus Sash worked out. Uh, after that, we're going to go out and face off against this really difficult fight against Archer and Ariana. Luckily, they let me cheese it by allowing me to Shell Smash up against him and then Extra String. It took me a little bit to finally get it. You'll never believe how many times they actually went for Sucker Punch. Normally, they let me set up twice and then Sucker Punch. But this time, they just attacked me right away. <laughs> Even though I didn't do anything. Sometimes the AI be messing up, but that's fine. Uh, from there, we could face off against Giovanni with Lance as our teammate. Uh, we got very close to losing this fight. But lucky enough, we clutch up at the end with the Celestila. Uh, it choked and attacked me. I guess it would have went down anyways, regardless of who he attacked. But... I feel like he choked and attacked me for no reason. And from there, we could face off against the 8th gym leader in the game. We could face off against Claire. Claire's not too much of a trouble. And we're going to start off the battle off against her Aerodactyl with my Lycanroc to a Cell Rock into him to knock him out. Anti-lead Lycanroc is the meta. Uh, next up, she's going to go into her Noggin and Del. I want to bait out some Draco Meteors so I can set up with my... You know, obviously, Shell Smashers, both my Armistar and my Crustle are pretty good. Archeops goes down, which is unfortunate, but it's not going to do too much of an issue. I go out into my Crustle against the Naga Nadel to Shell Smash off against him. Rock Slide into the Dragovich. We get a lucky flinch against him, so I assume he's going to switch out because that's how the AI works. And then I'm going to Shell Smash in front of the Dragonite. Rock Smash into that thing as well. Activates the weakness policy, but he also gets flinch, so I'm able to rock slide once more into the Dragonite to knock him out. Magonera comes out. I accidentally clicked the wrong move. I wanted to go for Bodos, but I fat finger clicked A again on Rock Slide, but it worked out. It gets another flinch. Three flinches. I should buy a lottery ticket. And then Bodos will finish off everything else. And ironically, Fat Fingering works and we beat Claire using it. So I'll go down to the Draladon, but I just need to go out to my focus sash golem. Such a dumb play. Uh, Earthquake would knock him out and it worked out. Things worked out and now we can face off against our rival. This battle takes a toll on me. It's, it's such an annoying fight for some reason. Uh, but lucky enough, we do end up beating him and we can move on into the next fight against, obviously, Brendan. Now, Brendan, not too difficult of a fight. We're going to use Amistar and beat him down. And actually, these fights are actually more easier than the fights in Victory Road. We spent a little time in Victory Road. Uh, I lied. I'm not actually lying. And we have to go back to Fuchsia City to get the HM for strength because I always forget it for some reason. And then go back to Victory Road. From there, though, we're going to face off against the Elite Four. Uh, I spent 45 minutes facing off against Lorelei. We have to face off against her Ice Team because we are a Rock type monotype. So I don't think we're going to face off against her <laughs> Water Team anytime soon. Uh, we spent a lot of times doing this. Eventually, even though we get very close, we spend, we just don't win. I just spent all this time trying. Even if we get the luckiest attempts, right? We beat him. We go out into Bruno, and Bruno just stomps us. Our team is just complete trash. It just doesn't work. There is no synergy. It just doesn't work off each other. There's no openings. Like, I can't use a focus sash because this Alolan Golem has to focus sash. So, what I did is went backwards and... Decide to get rid of my alone golem. Uh, we brought back the goat dreadnought, even though we got rid of him after we get the armor start. That's all good though. Uh, we're gonna start the fight off against Lorelei's ice team with my dreadnought and my Archeops. We're facing off against the Glaceon and the Nine Tails. We're gonna put a Choice Scarf on Dreadnought to outspeed the Nine Tails, but uh, we also put a Focus Sash on our Glaceon because we already outspeed the Nine Tails. All we want to do is prevent it from using Aurora Veil. We're able to prevent that by rock studying and actually critting. And knocking out the nine tails, which is perfect. Okay, it's a good start. Uh, unfortunately, our Arceus will go down, but we also knock out the Glaceon using our Dreadnought, which is a Choice Scarf Dreadnought for some reason. But it actually worked out, worked out perfectly. Arceus goes down, and then I can switch out into my Crusto next. Crusto is going to Shell Smash up in front of the Calyrex and the Rotom. Risky play here, but I trusted Dreadnought to hopefully get a flinch on something, or we would have been dead. Uh, I should have went on to Golem to explode on him. And I'm able to get a Shell Smash up. I don't have Rock Slide. I forgot to put Rock Slide 
on Crusto. I've air released from the, my last attempt against Bruno. So I'm here stuck here. I'm just going to try to rock smash once again. But since I'm faster than Calyrex, I'm able to knock him out using x Scissor and then Rock Slide. Didn't flinch the Rotom again, but it actually worked out for me as I'm able to knock out the Rotom using Hail. Her last two Pokemon will be an Azumarill and an Abomasnow, which I go out to Golem. Does not have a focus as she has. Sturdy is an ability. Explode and knock out Lorelei's last two Pokemon. And we end up beating Lorelei super simply. Next up, we're going to go fight Bruno. And this is my favorite part of Radical Red. We have to tinker and move around your items to really adjust to the next battle. Our next fight is going to be against Bruno. We're going to start the battle off against his Infernape team. To do a wing beat into him to one shot him, obviously. We do have a Choice Scarf on, I believe, on my Archeops. So we could prevent it from just outspeeding me. And then I switch out to my Golem, predicting the Zacian to Sword Sense up. Earthquake will one-shot him since I'm banded. That is a benefit to using Golem opposed to a Lone Golem because he has Sturdy and can have a different item. So that's actually really useful. From there, he's going to switch out into a Conklinder. I don't know what to switch into. I decide to just go and sack my Golem because I don't know. It wasn't going to be useful anyways. I go out into my Dreadnought to do some chip damage. Uh, this was a horrible play. Did not work at all. But our guess will actually one-shot him with, I think, the chip damage matter. I'm just going to pretend the chip damage from the Dreadnought works, and that's that's why we beat him. I'm just going to sacrifice my Amistar against the Mega Lucario, and switch out into my Crustal to Earthquake. Got rid of Bodos because it was <laughs> got Power Crap very easily. And then from there, Urshifu comes out. It's going to close combat me. Uh, it lowers his defense, so it allows my Choice Scarf Archeops to do when we knock out the Urshifu, and also knock out the Como with a crit. So, we end up beating Bruno, and we're miles ahead of my previous run with my previous team. Next up, we're going to face off against Agatha. Agatha is going to be the ghost type, Elite Four member. We're going to face off against her Gengar team because it's so much easier. Just by easily one-shotting down Zoroark, just getting rid of one Pokemon, just make it a 5v6 instantly. And then next up, she can switch out into her Aegislash. I decided to go out into my Dreadnought. Don't know why. But Dreadnought is going to do some chip damage with Aqua Fang, and then it's going to, well, unfortunately die. Uh, but I do enough damage to I can switch out into my Arceus once again to Bodos to knock him out. And then for some reason, she switches out to her ace Mega Gengar. And I'm like, wait a second, just Bodos it. It went for a nasty plot too. So I outspeed him, Bodos again, knock him out. She goes out to the Specs Shooter. I decide to Bodos it as well. Lower his speed and then sack my almost start. Almost start. So useless. It'll get, it'll get his time. I had, I, I pre planned it. I know what I'm using with my almost start. But I go out to my Golem with Sturdy. Uh, Earthquake will knock out the Spectre and then let the Marshadow knock me out. Go out into my Crusto against the Marshadow. Somehow, some way, Marshadow loses his 1v1 against the Crusto. I was allowing it to knock me out just so I could get some chip damage and go out to my Rhyperior, but it wasn't needed. Rhyperior goes out against the Seal Valley to knock him out with an Earthquake, two Earthquakes, and we ended up being Agatha, which, based on matchup, we get the 5v6 and then it's over. Next up, we face off against Lance next. Lance is going to be the Dragon type Elite Four member. We're going to start the battle off against him using our Dreadnought. Oh, we want the Aerodactyl team. So, just kind of, we put a Sword Dance on our Dreadnought to bait out the Aerodactyl's taunt. Knock him out very easily. And then we put Flip Turn on the Dreadnought to break Dragonite's multi skill. Go into my Choice Scarf Almaster to Ice Beam and knock out the Dragonite. Now it's a 6v4, fairly easily. I go out, switch out to my Dreadnought to sack it, so even up a little bit more but I go out into my Rhyperior to knock out his Melmetal and so if we keep trading back and forth Pokemon I eventually win since I already got the initial kill on Aerodactyl without any trades. Dragovish comes out knocks out my Rhyperior. Explosion will knock out both my Pokemon so now it's going to be a 3v2. I go out to my Archeops to unfortunately not do enough damage against the Dialga because it's going to keep Roar timing me and Roar time is so broken in this game particularly. But I'm able to go out to my Amistar and freeze the Dialga, luckily. And I'm able to Ice Beam down and knock out Dialga. Uh, my Choice Scarf Amistar is not going to save the day, unfortunately. It's going to go down to the Salamence. So I have to face off against the Salamence using my <laughs> Crustal. Crustal is able to land a Rock Slide and then survive a second Double Edge with 1 HP. And then Rock Slide him in his face to knock him out. And we beat Lance with 1 HP. Very close fight. Very, very close fight. Next up, we're going to face off against the final battle in the game. We're going to face off against the champion. We're going to face off against Gary. Gary is going to start the battle off against us using Pheromosa. It's a chance. It's honestly a roll to see if I could live a close combat from it. So we're going to go back and forth. I'm 
Luckily, luckily, I live this close combat with 5 HP, forced him out into his Metagross after beating down the Feromosa using Dual Wing Beat. Archaeops is useless at this point. Sack him. Go out to my right here to Earthquake into the Metagross to knock him out. Fantastic. He goes out to his Yavelto next. I have no play here. I don't know what to do here. I decide to go out to my Drena. Hopefully, I can do some chip damage. He chipped me down so much that he is going to Oblivion Wing and knock me out. So, I went to my Crusto. He dark holes me and then he doesn't put me to sleep. I get a shell smash up and it's over. He goes for a sucker punch. I know that's it because I know he's going to try to attack me after it because he just did it. So I'm going to Exister, knock out the Uvelto. He goes out to his Groudon. I Earthquake crit him and it's over. It's over. I already got a shell smash up. Earthquake will knock out the Eternatus. Actually, I got two shell smash up, so it's basically over. Next up, he goes out to his Darmanitan and his Darmanitan locks himself into U-turn for some reason. So Golem's going to finish it off, and we finally beat the Leaf 4. It took a lot of tries. It took two hours to beat the Leaf 4. I don't know why. I hate this game. Uh, everything was actually going so simply, so well. Not an issue at all until we got to the Leaf 4, and it just spit in my face. Uh, maybe it's my fault for making a bad team composition, obviously, but it was just so difficult. Luckily enough, I dropped a Lolan Golem, put in Dreadnought, and put in my regular Golem, and things went way smoother. It's just so much easier. Uh, unfortunately, we had to box Lycan Rock. I just realized that. But it, we actually beat the game by replacing those two Pokemon. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. If you guys can, please leave a like. Comment down below some challenge ideas and some nicknames. So subscribe if you guys are not already. It really helped my channel. And my name is Benalfo. Hope you guys all had a great day and enjoy this challenge run. See you guys tomorrow for some Pokemon Unbound. Peace out.